if you saw the last video I made, uh, we landed here at this airfield, which is NZUN Pauidui Beach. But I made a mistake and got confused when we arrived looking for the runway, as I was thinking this one was Wahee Beach Aerodrome, which is actually the next one down the coast from here. So I thought, screw it, we will go to Wahee Beach anyway. Um, so welcome to today's Just Flying episode, with a little trip down the coast of North Ireland. And we're in the Marchetti again. Let's go for it. Well, the weather's certainly improved since the last video actually see where we're going this time. Yeah, so I made a mistake last time, as I was expecting Bowinui Beach to be Wahee Beach, which shows you the amount of flight planning I do in X-Plane. Uh, but in, anyway, we will get to the uh, airfield I'm expecting today, although I am wondering if I may have made a different mistake. Now, I fired up the sim, thought, Marchetti, nice playing, let's go for that again, and here we are. However, Wahi Beach, it's a grass airstrip, and the runway... Okay, it's not a tiny little bush airstrip, but this isn't the longest runway ever. And this Marchetti, it does seem to have fairly rubbish brakes on it. Now, slowing down, this is not a big selling point of the Marchetti SF260. So, I am now wondering if we're going to be able to land at Wahi Beach and stop before we play through the bushes and the fence at the end of the runway to a farmer's field. Now, it might be close, and to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't like to put a bet either way right now as to whether we're going to survive this one. But it, it is what it is. Um, if I were sensible, I would have changed the plane for something else before I started recording this flight. But yeah, yeah, you need to be going to somebody else's YouTube channel for sensible flying. Um, um, anyway, got, got something new to try later. Um, did some shopping. Something just caught my eye for some reason. And I now have a bottle of Korean soju in the fridge. Absolutely no idea, never had soju in my life. It, it's a clear liquid and it's alcoholic. That's really all I can say, so quite looking forward to that. Yeah, plan is, might, might be Chinese takeaway. Got the Football European Championships have started, so yeah, good feed this evening, then feet up with a football match, and I'll open the bottle and see what soju is actually like. Yeah, if it's rubbish, I've got some beer instead, so it's okay. It's my, my favourite beer too, um, a Belgian brew called Lef. Um, you saw a bottle of that which I opened in the 250 video. Yeah, very nice and, uh, well, nice in moderation. Yeah, I say that because a couple of months ago I met up with uh, three friends in a pub chain that sells Lef and started drinking that. Now, most of the time I don't have it when I go out, as it is quite a strong beer, and certainly stronger than most things I usually drink, but that day I did. Uh, so, a few of those, then somebody started buying rounds of whiskey, and yeah, but by the time I got home, I very definitely drunk. And then trying to take my trousers off to go to bed, I fell over and smashed the back of my head into a metal radiator on the wall really hard. Now, fortunately, I'm drunk enough not to feel that, so went to bed and that was that. And Next morning, 
hangover as you would expect uh, over the course of the few hours that slowly went away but for the whole of that day my head wasn't quite right you know, I'm, I'm talking like cognitive abilities with thoughts and everything it was all just a little bit fuzzy and not quite as it should be yeah, the following day, back to normal, totally fine again. So, I'm thinking that fuzzy feeling in my head, which went on way too long to be a hangover, combined with smacking my head on the radiator when I fell over, I think I may have given myself my first ever beer-related concussion. Yes, yeah, so Lef, uh, great beer, really like it, um, come highly recommended from me, uh, but don't have too many, or perhaps would you wear a, a, a crash helmet. Um, yeah. yeah, other things then. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this once before, but I've been having a great time watching 1950s sci-fi movies. Yeah, there's loads of them on YouTube, and they are just brilliant. Brilliant for all the wrong reasons, but they are still brilliant. Yeah, the level of scientific knowledge of space and the solar system back then, it, it was a, a, a little bit lacking to say the least. So it, it's fantastic seeing some of the things that the script writers have come up with and basically made stuff up and invented things. Yeah, There's so one film where yeah, it's on a, they're on a voyage to the planet, planet Venus and they're going to Venus because there may be Earth-like creatures there as Venus has an atmosphere similar to that of planet Earth. Yeah, the fact that you couldn't breathe as the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, it's got a high enough pressure to crush you and a high enough temperatures to melt you. Yeah, I suppose nobody knew that back then. Um, there was another lovely moment in a different one where the crew of a spaceship had dinner midway through their voyage sat round a table with a tablecloth and candles as you always do find candles on spaceships don't you uh, the, the, one of my favourite moments though was a film where their spaceship was launched and the camera zoomed in on a dial with a needle and written on it was the word gravity ometer reviews yeah, I, I want a gravity ometer for my plane. I, I do feel like we're all missing out as gra gravity ometers have not become a thing now. Um, yeah, there's also another one, beautiful one with the total lack of knowledge of, well, physics in general, really. A spaceship on the way to the moon runs into a meteor shower which knocks them off course but they then happened to be pointing at the planet Mars. So the crew decided, hey, hey no worries, we'll, we'll just go to Mars instead. That will be totally fine. Yeah, so I've watched quite a few now, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to run out of these 50s films soon, but yeah, then we can move on to 1960s sci-fi and see how far their knowledge of the universe has improved. As far as script writers go, uh, probably not very much, I'm guessing, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, uh, right then. Nearly here, so even with the lack of a gravity ometer to help us, uh, let's see if we can land at Way Beach. Just coming up here. Um, It is slightly longer in runway length than I remembered. I'm feeling a, a little bit better about landing. Um, 
I mean, the brakes still are rubbish on this plane, so I'm not 100% confident of stopping in time, but, yeah, I'm thinking we might be okay. Yeah, if we can get down fairly close to the threshold... Um, yeah, low enough speed if we've got good speed controls. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. turn around and come back in as there's not much wind today uh, is it five knots yeah may as well make use of those five knots uh, will help a, a tiny bit with our ground speed and we may need all the help we can get speed control is going to be one of the uh, biggest factors in whether this landing is going to be successful or not. Need to get on the floor fairly close to the threshold and if we're going too fast and floating down the runway that's not going to end well. see what we can do. Hmm, nice view for the passengers of that coach. Right, well, looking good. And on the brake. No problem at all, there's out loads of runway left. Must admit I'm a little surprised that we got stopped as soon as we did. Um, yeah, saying that, we did land reasonably close to the threshold, just uh, for the speed. That was, well to have the stall warner going off as you're touching down, that's just about perfect, isn't it? Okay, not a, a butter smooth touchdown, but nothing wrong with that landing. And, um, yeah, very, very happy with that one. Um, yeah, there's been quite a few videos where I've said words to the effect of, you know, well, that one's not going to make my top ten list of best landings ever. Um, yeah, that, this one, for th this might actually make my top ten list. Um, yeah, very happy. So here with a, a bit of a silly smile now. So. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Glad we did take the Marchetti after all. Uh, oh, park up here. Close to the uh, Surf Shack Cafe and get the coffee on. I'll be in in a moment. Right, so there we are. We, we did make it to Wahee Beach um, one video too late. And... Uh, yeah, successful landing even without a gravitometer. Oh, well, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll see you again next time then. Bye.